this is in the Bronx. When hip hop started, which was 1974, there was two other things going on. One was punk, and prior to punk, there was a thing called the hippies. Okay, people that just wanted to be smoked out, <laughs> wear flowers, you know, it was rich white kids with too much money and bullshit. <laughs> and, you know, you could go back and look at the films, you don't see a brown face in sight. <laughs> They could be hippies on the weekend, and on the week, you know, they're with mommy and daddy who are accountants, but that's another story. <laughs> then I went into punk where people were, I did a book on punk, it's called Punk Life, and that was interesting. <laughs> then, they were not voices of the people. They were voices to keep the people content. Just like now you have slave music. Hip hop, the voice of our people through the expression of graffiti. Okay, in memory of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Okay, famous artist. This is again Dez, he's a famous DJ uh, now. Yes. I'm curious as to why you say it started in 74 as opposed to um, 73, because you know how there's that, um, I think I saw, you, you posted it actually with, um, with um, Cool Herc's, like, you know, actual birthday invite for, for the party in 73, um, in August. And so people say, well, that's when hip-hop started. Well, there were two things that started, and they started a year apart. One was the Universal Zulu Nation, which precedes hip-hop by one year. And that was created by Africa Bambada. You go forward, and you have another organization created, which is the Temple of Hip-Hop. And the Temple of Hip-Hop was created by KRS-One, under the auspices and guidance of Brother Africa Van Bottle. Then we created a third entity, which was for pioneers only, called the Federation for the Preservation of Hip Hop and Culture, AKA the Federation, which last April I quit because people would rather brag about shit they did than what they're doing. You have to understand it was 74, 84, 94, 2004. You got to keep evolving. If I just stopped here, this is in Brooklyn. The kid who did this was about 14 years old. His name was Gnome, G-N-O-M-E, and it was like making fun because he looked like a little gnome. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't know who this kid is. Somebody. <laughs> You're going too fast. I know you're excited. <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time. How many of you know of a group called the X Clan? Okay, now again, this is multiple choice, but it's going to be on the test. So. <laughs> How many of you remember a song called You Must Learn? KRS One. You must learn. They don't try to make a dog. Uh, what do you say? They don't try to make a, huh? Yeah, they don't try to make a dog a cat. You know. There was KRS One. There was an X Clan. There was a group called PRT, which stood for Poor Righteous Teachers. The brother who headed that was intelligent. And at the same time, there was a group that was influencing Bambada and influencing the founders of hip hop. There was two groups. One is called the Wanubians, who was led by Dr. York, KMD. How many of you have heard of the Dr. York, the Wanubians? Okay, how many of you know the other group that was out there called? No, what was, what was, the, what was the family, what was the group? What, what was created by Clarence 13X? Gods and the Earths, AKA the 5% Nation. Anybody know the theology of the 5% Nation? If you don't, I'll tell you. 5% of the Earth. 
5% of the people are the poor righteous teachers. 10% are the wicked, the George Bushes, the, that parasitic old man prick that they had. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Dom Runsfield, that degenerate. Saddam Hussein, all these people get together once a year, by the way, in Bohemian Grove, Bohemian Grove, and they all hump each other and do all kinds of <laughs> freaky shit. Then they get on the news and, and they talk about each other's mamas. Fact, look it up, Bohemian Grove, remember I told you, BG, Bohemian Grove, don't take my word for it, don't take my word for anything. Unless you can do your own research, it's not valid. You must learn. The Bohemian Grove, these same people all over the world, they get together once a year. Once a year they get together. And no media is allowed to cover it. Anybody know what this stands for? CFR. Council of Foreign Relations. Council on Foreign Relations. Which is an offshoot of what? Trilateral Commission. What I'm trying to tell you about all these things is that our enemies that want to have us enslaved. Jules, can I have some water? The people who want to have us enslaved have their shit together. They have organizations and a depth and a, and, a, and, a, and a violence and they have meetings. And the press is not allowed to go because the press is part of it. It's all controlled. Ask me, I work for all of them. I work for all of them stations. They were scared to death when they found out who I was. They got their shit together and we don't. We should not ever have any hunger because we have the ability to feed ourselves. We should not need for anything. And, and the last time I spoke here in Toronto, I told you, I said, there's a lot of stuff I could tell you I'm not going to tell you because it will only upset you. Go look at the video and see if I said that. Well, right now I feel like upsetting you because just a few months ago, I was diagnosed with terminal cancer. I don't drink, I don't smoke, so it's kind of weird that I would get sick. And at 64, I look pretty good for, you know, an old guy that's been... I went to the doctors and did all that mumbo jumbo, it didn't work, so I prayed and I'm here now. So I decided to be real and to keep it straight. Right now, and there's some people in here who know what I'm going to tell you, cotton. Now I know you all got cotton on somewhere, even if it's your drawers or your socks. It's getting ready to go up 30 to 50 percent. The price of gasoline, because of the instability in the Middle East, you're going to be paying five, six, seven, whatever dollars. It's going to go crazy. But you can live without your car, and you can use and recycle your old clothes. You can wear blankets if you got to. You could do what you got to do. We got enough clothes. We don't need any more clothes. But the one thing you can't do without, and it's getting ready to go up 40 to 50 percent, is food, basic foods, the most basic, basic foods. So I've been telling everybody in my community to go out and get everything that's non-perishable. Stock up. Because the person who has food, the person who don't have food, is going to come knocking on your door. Yo, B, cats that ain't seen you in a while. Hey, man, what's up? How you doing? <laughs> you know, they're going to be talking to you. They haven't seen you in a long time. All of a sudden, they're your best friend. What's up? And they're going to come knocking on his door and act like, you know, he's their cousin. Because he got food. And they don't. Hip-hop, Karis once said, is the voice of black people. But he also said we're all from that same root. But he also said, he made a warning, that it would be the last voice of black people. Now I'm going to give you some names. Anybody know this brother? Anybody got an eraser for this thing? <laughs> Gil Scott Heron. Anybody know who Gil Scott Heron is? The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. And he also did Winter in America. And he has a new album out called I'm New Here. And on that there's a song called Running. And I suggest 
to you all if you want to hear true, magical use of language in a powerful MC. Listen to the word running. He says, if I'm running, it got to be for something worthwhile. He says, something more important than my life. And he goes on and breaks down the word running. Gil Scott Heron. Anybody in here ever hear the last poets? The last poets. Who in here ever heard the last poets? You heard the last poets. Of course you did. The last poets came out in the 60s before allegedly hip hop. The last poets. I guarantee you, you listen to the last poets, and they're more current than 50 cent and 40 cent and 30 cent and 20 cents and all these half boys that got to show you their butt cheeks. Much more relevant. And they were dangerous because they didn't play. The last poets. The X Clan. That's Flavor Flav. His hair is so nappy, he needs two barbers. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, that was in his barber shop. Uh, one thing that you may or may not know about uh, Flavor Flav is that he's an extremely intelligent man. He plays several different instruments. He plays, speaks different language. And in the history, yeah, try to erase it there. In the history, of hip hop, there's nobody more iconic, meaning that when you see them, you instantly know who they are. There's no one. What do you want me to erase? Everything. Oh. I'm sure everybody copied it down and they're listening and keep going. Okay. Now, let me show you something about hip hop. This is important. Yes? So why did Flavor Flav give in? Flavor Flav didn't give in. And I'm about to get to that. I didn't show him for no reason. If you look at Flavor Flav and you're intelligent people, how many of you in here are betting people? How many bet? How many like to bet? Some people bet if the friggin' sun's gonna come up. You like to bet. <laughs> okay. If I were to make a bet with you, which is gonna last longer, Flavor Flav or the World Trade Center, which would you bet on? <laughs> Obviously, somebody didn't like the World Trade Center. <laughs> Obviously, somebody didn't like capitalism. Obviously, somebody did not believe the mythology that you're taught that capitalism and democracy are somehow related to freedom, justice, and equality, or equal to religion. So people ask me, okay, wise ass, you don't like democracy, you don't believe in freedom, just, I, whoa, whoa, whoa. how are you gonna tell me what I believe? Oh, you don't like capitalism? What would you prefer? I said, where did capitalism originate from? Where did the United States get their, their, their whole bill of rights, that whole bullshit? Anybody know? Come on. Fuck, no, wrong. <laughs> Who? Stand up, please, and say that again. Thank you. That was the blueprint for America. And in a tribal situation, you get the tribal elders, you get the people, and you make a decision predicated upon the people. Democracy does not work because, yes, you have the vote. But if I pick who's running and tell you to pick from one of these cats, and these, all these cats are running, or people that are friends of mine, we all got the same agenda, just different faces. I'm Obama, I'm Bush, you know. Same agenda, different faces. And how many of you believe, now this is a serious question, how many of you believe that the president actually makes decisions in the United States? Question. I mean, really makes all of them decisions. Or is he a figurehead? Or is he worse a puppet? It, how many of you actually believe he said, oh, yeah, I mean, we're going. How many of you really believe he, he makes, nobody? Okay, good. <laughs> That's my book, by the way. Go ahead. I, I just get people. Keep going. I don't know what I got on here. Keep going. I don't know. I. Go ahead. Okay. Stop there. I I have several. I have several PowerPoints, so I don't know which one. <laughs>